Hey, it's me, MLB. Here is chapter 81 of Gains, and this one is titled Oodles of Noodles. Wait, that's a lot, Cat. Hold on. Wait, you begged. Babakago was on a mission to feed you, and despite your protests, he just held the noodle-filled fork up to your mouth, and you reflexively opened your mouth to receive it. Stop whinging and eat, he grunted, nodding after he had fed you a massive mouthful of noodles. Mm-mm, you hummed with delight, battling to get the noodles into your cheeks so you could speak properly. It's not spicy, though, you joked. You were just messing. It was plenty spicy. Shut up and put plenty on, Bakugo snapped. You giggled at his reply. I'm joking, cat. It's very good, he replied with a smile, gingerly chewing on your noodles. Kiri was very intent on making sure that you were eating your fill, but the delicious aromas of the noodles was wafting around his nostrils so tantalizingly that it was making him slowly lose his mind. Um, are you okay if I have mine too? He asked you gently letting you go to see if you could sit by yourself. Mm-hmm, you hummed as Bakugo shoved another mouthful into your gob. Kiri's begging gaze then met Bakugo's. Um, bro, can I please have my bowl? He begged, saliva almost choking him up as he asked his question. Yeah, get it, Bakugo said with a jerk of his head towards the bowls on the tray on the bed. He was more focused on feeding you at that point. Kiri could get his own. Thanks, bro, Kiri said, getting up and leaning over to get some food. You reached out and rubbed his back as he reached over, still chewing your mouthful. Mmm, so good, you mumbled through your food. It smells amazing, Kiri admitted, picking up the bowl and sitting back beside you. Are you going to eat? You then asked Bakugo, who was already getting the next mouthful ready for you. No, I'm going to feed your stupid ass, then I'll eat, he said. You don't need to have to feed anyone's stupid ass. Feed your own stupid ass, you stupid ass. I can feed myself. You pouted half playfully. You didn't mind his sundary act, but at the same time you weren't a baby, you could feed yourself, so you reached out to take the fork from him, but he yanked it away. Stop it, he growled. Put your hands down or I'll blast you. It's not nice to threaten your girlfriend, you pouted with a lightly annoyed look on your face. Speak nicely or I'll never let you feed me again. I'm still stronger than you. I can easily pin you down and force you to open your mouth. Back you go rasped in a low voice. Not gonna lie, your mind went elsewhere, and by the look on his face, his mind had also joined yours in the gutter, and now they were both just standing there with the, if you know what I mean, look on their faces. Uh, <clears throat> um, you finally said, clearing your throat. I can take it from here, thanks. And without a fight, Bakugo just handed the fork to you and kept his head down, obviously hiding his blush. Wow, this is amazing, Kiri suddenly said brightly, and you almost laughed. No surprises that the low-key, unintentional sexual innuendo went right over the golden retriever's head. Um, it's good, right? You asked him, looking across to him. So good, he replied passionately, getting more food on his fork. Love the feeling of something hot in your throat, he said casually, and Bakugo nearly choked on his mouthful, which he found very amusing, and started to giggle. I'm gonna kill you, Bakugo seethed with embarrassment. You okay, bro? You want some water? Kiri asked brightly, while you continued to giggle while you got some more noodles on your fork. Stop laughing in, or I'll kiss you, Bakugo growled. Now that shut you up. Um, by the way, I mentioned it to E, you said to Bakugo, about the kissing. Suddenly things went a little quiet as Kiri blushed away silently, and Bakugo ducked his head away so you and Kiri couldn't see him too well. Oh, now everyone goes silent, you said with amusement. I'm curious though, how did you want to tackle this because I already know who's going to demand to go first. Me, Bakugo said without hesitation. There you go, knew it, should have placed a bet, you replied. Um, well, what if we roll a dice and whoever gets the higher number gets to go first, Kiri offered. Still going to be me, Bakugo said confidently. You need to be okay with it if it's not you though, you said knowingly. You're not allowed to blow out the dice or go first anyway, irrespective of the results. Bakugo clicked his tongue to his cheek before getting more noodles on his fork. But I like that idea. It takes the decision making out of it so no one can blame the other. You said, getting more food on your fork yourself. Mmm. Kiri hummed sharply to get your attention as he finished his mouthful. And Yin, you need to be blindfolded so you don't know who went first. Oh, what a twist. Okay, yeah, I'm down for that. You said, putting more food in your mouth. You good with that, bro? Kiri asked Bakugo. Fine, Bakugo grunted, getting his next mouth already. Okay, that settles it then, Kiri said brightly. Um, when though, when is this going to take place? You asked after swallowing your mouthful down. 
Um, what about after your reevaluation? Kiri asked. That'll be a good time, I think. Um, yeah, okay, you said, starting to feel a little excited and nervous about it. That good for you, Kat? Mm. He grunted in confirmation as he ate more food. Okay, good. Done, you said with a smile, getting ready to eat more. Later, after the two boys had left, you finished your homework by yourself and then got into bed again. You thought that maybe you wouldn't be tired because you'd basically slept all day, but before you knew it, you were out like a light and slept right until 10am the next morning. Groggily, you sat up and surprisingly, you felt much better than yesterday. Oh, thank goodness, you thought, reaching for your phone to reply to two messages you knew would already be there. On that second day of recovery, you went out for a small walk, ate well, and even rang your mum to see how she was going, and also to fill her in on your day. You kept details of your injury to a minimum, just knowing that she would overreact, and did mention Kiri and Bakugo, but kept out all the details about your dating both of them at the same time. And how are you mum? Are you okay? You asked, after most of the conversation had been about you. Your mum paused, and you felt like she was maybe getting emotional on the other end of the line. Oh, she sniffed. My baby. No one asks how I'm doing. This is the first time you've asked me how I'm doing. How you're growing up, my beautiful girl. You have such a big heart. A hero's heart, she gushed. You're truly going to be a superstar one day. And there ends chapter 81. Stay tuned for chapter 82 coming tomorrow.